Mark, how are you feeling? Not bad, but not particularly great either. I'm so sorry about what my mom did. I know it's not something that'll go away with an apology, and I doubt you'll ever forgive her. But I promise you she didn't do it on purpose. So about the compensation, would you mind maybe rethink... She didn't do it on purpose, so don't take it to court for compensation. That's what you're about to ask, isn't it? I mean, it's not exactly like that, but... But she doesn't have insurance. Look, I'm just gonna be straight with you. She's simply not sure if she can come up with the amount of money you're asking for. It's a lot, Mark. I'm fully aware of how much it is. But your mom ran me over and now I'm in a wheelchair. Do you understand that? It's like all you can think about is the consequences on your end. No amount of money could ever make up for this. The nerves on my spine and legs are so damaged that they said it'll be a miracle if I ever walk again. Which means I'm not going to be able to continue in the same line of work. My life's been flipped upside down and you still have the nerve to ask me to not press your mom for money? I'm sorry, Mark. I'm so, so sorry. But my mom didn't do it on purpose, I swear. Duh. If she did, she'd be in prison. Don't get me wrong, I'd be way more satisfied seeing her behind bars. But even if it wasn't on purpose, the result is the same. Please don't say things like that. Believe me, Taylor, this is me holding back. Let's face it, your mom always hated me. What? I don't know anything about that. Oh? So did you forget about all the times she poked fun of me for being ugly? Or how she said she hates my personality. Or her endless making fun of me for supposedly being infertile. You have no idea how long I've been holding my tongue around that woman. And the only reason I did it was for you. But there are some things that can't be overlooked. I'm drawing a line here. She won't get away with this. But she's super broken up about it too, Mark. She feels terrible. And she's really sorry. If she was that sorry, she could have at least come to see me in the hospital. Not only that, but she hasn't even apologized yet. How sorry can she be? It's pretty obvious she has no intention of apologizing. She probably doesn't even care. Mark, she probably just finds it difficult to talk to you. She's never been one to discuss her emotions. And she always becomes so withdrawn when she's stressed out. I bet she just doesn't know the right way to apologize. She wants to, I just know it. She must be so ridden with guilt that she can't even bring herself to face you. Whether it's difficult to say or not, whether she can't bring herself to face me or not, I can't walk anymore because of her. If she can't do the right thing now, and she never will, surely the least she could do is give me an apology. Isn't that what any normal person would do in this situation? You're right. Look, I can't deny anything you're seeing, Mark. It's all true. But my mom is so depressed. I've never seen her like this. I think she knows she did something unforgivable, and it's eating her up. Even so. But please, listen to me. She spoke to me earlier today. She said she wants to be the one who picks you up when you get discharged from the hospital. If you give her the chance and let her meet you, she'll apologize. I just know it. She's finally ready to see me on the day of my discharge. She can stick a ride home where the sun don't shine. If you're not going to be the one there waiting for me when I get out, I'll take a taxi home. But mom says she really wants to go. She practically insisted. Have you lost your mind? Why would I want to ride home from the person that ran me over? Please, Mark. I'm pleading with you. Can you find it in your heart to give her just one chance to apologize to you? I know it took her longer than it should have to come to this point. But she's finally ready to face her mistakes and meet you. It's a big step for her. And I believe she genuinely wants to make amends. Can you please hear her out? Taylor, I don't know if I can do this. 
It's been so hard for me to even think about seeing her again after everything that happened. But if it means that much to you, I'll consider it. Just know that allowing her to pick me up doesn't mean I forgive her. It's simply me allowing her that small opportunity. Nothing more, nothing less. Thank you, Mark. I truly appreciate your willingness to at least give her a chance. I understand that forgiveness might not come easily, and that's okay. All I ask is for you to let her pick you up and hear her out. Maybe it's her way of showing how desperate she is to apologize and make things right. It could be a small step toward healing and rebuilding the bridges that were broken. I want to make it clear though. This doesn't mean I'm giving her a free pass or that everything will magically go back to the way it was. I just want to see what she has to say. I need to gauge her sincerity and see if she's truly remorseful for the pain she caused. So yes, she can pick me up, but let's not misconstrue it as an immediate forgiveness, or a complete reconciliation. I completely understand, Mark. I don't expect you to forgive her right away, or to forget the pain she caused. It's a process, and we all need time to heal. I'm grateful that you're willing to at least listen to her apology. It means a lot to both her and me. This gesture shows that you're open to the possibility of healing and moving forward. Even if it's a slow and cautious journey. I just hope she understands that this is just the beginning. Apologies won't repair the damage that has been done. It will take consistent effort, genuine remorse, and a willingness to make amends. I hope she realizes the gravity of her actions and is ready to take responsibility. I will make sure she understands that, Mark. I'll talk to her and emphasize the importance of consistent effort and genuine change. We all have a long road ahead of us, but with patience and understanding, we can work towards rebuilding trust and finding a way to move forward. Thank you again for considering this, Mark. It means more to me than words can express. What the heck do you think you're playing at? Leaving me on the top of a mountain like that. By any chance, did you abandon me there on purpose? Excuse me. Well, I never. You actually had a phone signal from up there? Modern technology never ceases to amaze me. This doesn't make any sense. What are you doing? Why did you leave me up here? You drive me out in the middle of nowhere to the top of some random ass mountain Lift me out of the passenger seat, put me down in the grass, and drive away. I can't walk, damn it! What are you thinking? It's December right now. Do you have any idea how cold it was up there? It was snowing, for crying out loud! I don't see what the problem is if you are well enough to be messaging me. Just because by some miracle I was able to get a signal doesn't mean that what you did was okay. If I had no signal, there was a the chance I might have died. How could you lead me to a place like that? Do you have any idea how much danger I was in? But you're alive, aren't you? So quit your whining already. You must have found a taxi, right? I bet you're all warm and snug at home now, right? All's well that ends well. That's not the point! Enough of your rambling. I have some news for you. Taylor won't be coming home again. Huh? I'm seeing to it that she divorces you and marries someone else. I see, and why exactly are you doing that? Is it because I'm a cripple? What use am I if I can't walk after all? Or perhaps it's because I'm infertile. Take your pick. Not only does her new man make more money than you, but he's also better looking. He could have been a model if he wasn't such a successful businessman. What's more, he already has a son with his ex-wife, so that proves he's capable of having kids. He ticks all the boxes. All of his male functions are in order, if you catch my drift, unlike someone we know. So is this why Taylor hasn't been answering my texts or calls? Is that what she wants, or are you just forcing her? 
you can message her all you like, but you're wasting your time. I told her to switch her phone off and keep it off, so good luck, lol. I also told her to relax, put her feet up, and leave all of the divorce proceedings to me. I see. Hmm, I wonder why your wife didn't show up to see you today. Today of all days. The day you, her husband, got out of the hospital after recovering from the accident that left you unable to walk. Can you think of anything a stay-at-home housewife could possibly have to do? That would be more important than being reunited with you? Oh, I wonder. <laughs> she told me you had something you wanted to tell me. I assumed she didn't come because she wanted to let us talk in private. Are you saying that's not the reason? Obviously not. <laughs> Are you stupid? Don't answer. That was rhetorical. Oh, Mark, I can't believe I'm finally going to have a grandchild. I can't tell you how relieved I am. You losing the use of your legs was the straw that broke the camel's back for that girl. I'm telling you, her mind's well and truly made up now. I can't use my legs anymore because of you. You! Ugh, don't say such horrible things. It was an accident, plain and simple. As far as the accident goes, I'm sorry. It's actually impressive how casually you're able to say things you don't mean at all. Accident or not, it's your fault this happened. If not for you, I wouldn't be in this wheelchair and I'd still be able to walk. Good grief, do you ever stop whining? Put a lid on it with no legs. It was bad enough when you were just infertile, but now you're crippled too? You're literally useless. <laughs> what? Oh well, what do I care about? Taylor's marrying a hunk with the real deal in between his legs and the history to prove it. The worries you've caused us are a thing of the past now. Have you ever heard of female infertility? I'll have you know, there's nothing wrong with my little guys. They're great swimmers. Huh? I can't take any more of your crap. Time you knew the truth. It's not me who's infertile. Taylor is the one incapable of having kids. Wait, what? What are you talking about? Is this some kind of coping mechanism? Whatever. If it makes your tragic little existence slightly more bearable, then who am I to stop you? A coping mechanism? I'm just relaying the results of a fertility check, you delusional toad. My boys are as potent as they come. I've been happy with just a normal result. But it turns out, I actually have a higher than average sperm count. I've practically got my own little tadpole army. You can look at the medical certificate if you don't believe me. I've been getting tested fairly regularly since way back. Oh my god. Is this true? My tailor is infertile? No, it can't be. It is. But why? Why did you let me say those things all this time? Why didn't you set me straight if you knew all along? Isn't it obvious? I had to protect Taylor from you. Because I know how horrible you'd beat her if you knew she couldn't have kids. I had no problem with you believing I was infertile while she underwent therapy. If that was the price to pay for keeping her safe from you, so be it. I loved her more than anything and there's nothing I wouldn't have done to protect her. Honestly, it was a no-brainer. Far from being bothered by a toxic loser like you thinking poorly of me, I wore it as a badge of honor. I've had it now, though. Here's another one for you, too. I've known she cheated on me for a long time now. Huh? I hired a private investigator, her behavior got so suspicious that the signs were too strong to ignore. Funnily enough, it was her lover who gave the game away in the end though. What? You've known for a while now? But I still haven't even met her new fiancé. Surely I'd know about this. Hmm, interesting. Wait, does this mean she has a third guy on the go? She's been a busy girl if so. You know what though? What difference does it make? I don't even want to know. God, she's disgusting. 
You both make me sick. Wait, please. None of this makes any sense. I just don't understand. Nah, I've had enough for one lifetime. We can continue this in court through our lawyers. Mark my words. You will owe me so much in compensation, you'll wish it was you who got hit by the car. Prepare yourself. Wait, no, please. This doesn't add up with what Taylor told me. She said I wouldn't have to pay you anything. What planet do you live on? Are there actually people as delusional as you on this planet? I can't walk because of you. You know what, I feel like an idiot now. But I did actually intend on reconsidering taking you to court based on the sincerity of your apology today. I wouldn't have guessed you'd abandon me on the top of a mountain in the middle of winter in my wildest dreams. Rest assured, I'll be telling my lawyer all about today's shenanigans too. You've made this ten times worse for yourself. I have to deal with your treacherous witch of a daughter now, so if you'll excuse me. Mark, are you okay? I have nothing to say to you. You can go through my lawyer from now on. That's all. Please, I need your help. It's mom. She's being so, so horrible to me, and she won't stop. Every single day, the verbal abuse never ends. You're a failure of a human being. What good are you with that barren wasteland of a womb? You'll never fulfill your duties as a woman. I'm ashamed to call you my daughter. Not my problem. You're getting everything you deserve for cheating on me. I'm infertile, so we'll never find out. God, you make me sick. And you did it in my car, of all places. I almost threw up watching the dashcam footage. You should probably try and avoid being covered in the smell of your lover's aftershave when you cheat on your next husband. You'll get away with it longer that way. I'm sorry. Look, my new fiancé broke up with me. Yeah, I heard about that. He actually had the decency to get rid of you when he found out you were married. Can't say you don't deserve it, though. Oh yeah. There was something else I wanted to ask you. I wonder if you can answer this. I probably won't get another chance to ask you. Why did you cover for your mom when she caused the accident? You covered for your mother after paralyzing me. Despite her blatantly being in the wrong, then you divorced me. What exactly was your end game? Weren't you worried about your affair getting out? Or did you decide you like a lover boy more than me when my legs stopped working? I knew there was no going back for us. I felt awful about it. You've always been so good to me, being there for me when I was going through hard times. You were my rock, and I felt pathetic for what I'd done to you. But I thought that if I could remarry and hide my infertility to my new husband... Ah, uh, you intended on repeating the same mistakes then. You are beyond saving. <laughs> Please, Mark, I know I did wrong. I said I'm sorry. You don't have to be so hard on me. I feel horrible enough as it is. Do you have any idea how much it pains me that I'll never have kids of my own? Can you even imagine what that feels like? Incredible. Only you could claim to be the victim in all of this. Give it a rest already. I was sick of hearing you speak. Would someone in anguish over not being able to have kids really say, I'm infertile so he'll never find out, to the man they're cheating on their husband with? Ugh, what is it with you? Seriously, have you no compassion? I used up all my dad's inheritance money. I have no job and to top it all off, I'm in tons of debt. Mark. We're both at rock bottom here. Maybe if you weren't taking out loans and getting wasted all the time, you'd still have some of your own money left. You've only yourself to blame. Please. I feel like I'm losing it here, Mark. 
I feel like I've always been a slave to my mom. I want out. You made your bed. Now lie in it. We discussed cutting off ties with your mother when me and you got married all those years ago, remember? Mark, please. Let's make another go of it. Please? And I have one more chance. Will you protect me one more time? I'll do anything. I mean it. And I'll never betray you again, I promise. Whether you could have kids or not, I've always said I'd be happy as long as I had you. I meant it. I really did. I loved you more than anything, Taylor. Whether your mom abused me till she ran out of words to abuse me with, whether it meant struggling financially. I loved you too much to care about any of it. I know that. I've always been so grateful for you. Can't we go back to being like that? Just me and you? I used to be your sugar dumpling, and you my honey pie. You make me want to vomit. It's not happening in a million years. So just give up. I've lost everything. My legs, my family. I was stabbed in the back by the person I love the most in the world. The one who needs protecting here is me, from you. Please, Mark, I beg you to listen to me. I am truly sorry for everything I have done. I know I made terrible choices, and I can't change the past, but I want to make it right now. I want to be there for you, to take care of you, to support you through your rehabilitation. Just give me a chance to prove myself, please. Taylor, it's not that simple. Your apologies can't erase the pain and betrayal I felt when you left me for someone else. And let's not forget about your mother's neglect and disregard for my safety. How could I trust you again after all of that? How could I believe that you won't abandon me once more? I understand why you feel that way, Mark. And I don't blame you for your doubts. But I swear to you, I will never betray you again. You are the reason I wake up every day. The reason I want to be a better person. We used to be a team, and I believe we can be that again. Let's give our relationship one more chance, just like in the old times. Remember the good times we had together? It's hard for me to forget the pain, Taylor. It's hard for me to overlook the fact that you abandoned me when I needed you the most. And as for your mother, her actions were inexcusable. I can't ignore that either. It's not just about being a team. It's about trust, respect, and genuine care for one another. I need time to process everything and figure out if I can ever trust you again. Mark, please don't shut me out completely. I know I made mistakes, but I'm willing to put in the work to rebuild our relationship. I'll prove to you that I've changed, that I've learned from my past actions. I'll be there for you, supporting you every step of the way. I want to be the person you can rely on, the person who will never let you down again. Please, give me a chance to show you that I can be better. After finalizing divorce proceedings and receiving a tidy sum of compensation from the cheating backstabber and her wicked mother, I embarked on my new life by putting up my house up for sale and I'm currently planning my next move while I wait for a buyer. I heard Taylor got institutionalized with severe mental illness over what happened to me. But like I said before, it's not my problem. I don't wish her ill, but anything that ever was between us is no more and will never be again. I wasn't able to press charges on our ex-mother-in-law for paralyzing me in the accident. But I was so livid over the whole abandoned on a snowy mountain in the middle of the winter trick she pulled that I filed a police report immediately. Apparently, she's going through several rounds of rigorous questioning at the police station. And according to my lawyer, things don't look great for her. I'm sure from her perspective, it was her way of twisting the knife in after paralyzing me and saying goodbye, in the most malicious, black-hearted way possible, but as well as becoming notorious among the neighbors for having paralyzed someone through her careless driving. She also gained quite the reputation 
as the crazy old hag that dumps people she doesn't like on the top of mountains. I wasn't able to use my legs at all at first, but after going to the rehab sessions, like my life depended on it, I'm now able to take baby steps while grabbing onto railings. It's not much, but more than doctors ever hoped for. I may never be able to walk as well as I used to, but medical technology is advancing leaps and bounds these days, and I've always believed you should never give up hope. So nothing's gonna stop me from giving rehab my all. Thankfully, my company was very understanding and reinstated me for my usual position for office work. Now, I'm leading a stress-free life doing things I enjoy. They say every cloud has a silver lining between the compensation and my savings. I'm in the fortunate position of having a lot more money stashed away. I'm thinking of starting my own company. In any case, I can't tell you how great it feels to not be plagued with so many worries anymore. In a sense, this is the best revenge I could have ever hoped for.